Okay, so let's uh, look at the Ashto LRFD design approach for load induced fatigue. And um, in this case, uh, we have the FLS1 or the infinite load consideration, fatigue con consideration, and the finite uh, or FLS2 uh, life, uh, fatigue life consideration. So when we look at the limit state function in Ashto, it really is given by this gamma, which is a load factor times the delta F, this is the nominal stress. So this is the load side of the function. And this has to be smaller than or equal to delta F N. This is the capacity side. So the left is the demand side, the right is the capacity side. If you were to really uh, look at this, this would read as eta gamma delta F less than or equal to phi and delta F. So eta and phi are equal to 1.0 for the fatigue uh, limit states and you can see that in, in Ashto LRFD. So as I mentioned delta F is the stress range which is based on the nominal stress for the detail which is the demand. Delta Fn is the allowable stress range. This is based on the number of cycles and the stress category. This is the capacity side of the function. We only need to look at FS, FLS2 if, after we've investigated FLS1, our detail does not pass the test. So if we do not have infinite fatigue life, then we would go to FLS2 and make sure that it at least has a finite fatigue life. Okay, so for FLS1, uh, the difference is delta Fn has to be equal to delta F th which is the threshold stress it's some sort of a threshold stress so here we calculate delta fn in a certain manner for fls2 uh, whereas this one for fls1 is really the constant amplitude fatigue threshold this is the sn curve uh, uh, the example or a bit of a cartoonish representation of the sn curve in uh, in ashto it, this line has a slope of uh, one thirds. Really, as the stress level is going down, the number of stress cycles is going up. So if, you're, if your fatigue detail is really going to be seeing lower stress, then you can put more cycles through it, okay? But there is this constant amplitude fatigue threshold which is a theoretical threshold which basically says that if you have a constant amplitude loading, if the loading amplitude doesn't change ever, and if that stress that you put on your fatigue category or your detail is lower than this, then it can have an infinite life. Then the number of cycles doesn't even come into play. You can keep loading this thing and keep putting as many cycles uh, on this. It's just never going to have a fatigue failure. Okay, so the number of stress cycles is not really needed for the uh, f for the infinite fatigue life, and that's when your 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 stress is smaller than the CAFT. Uh, in some codes, you will see this the nomenclature is CAFL or uh, that acronym. In that case, is the constant amplitude fatigue limit. Okay, so this is a detail specific limit, and it's going to be higher for. A's and B's relative to um, or in relation to D's and E's, okay? Now, given that this slope is one thirds, what it tells us is that when we increase the stress by a factor of two, it will reduce our fatigue life by a factor of two to the power of three or eight. So this is evident from this curve or this graph that I'm showing, and then the equations that follow will uh, bear that out. Okay, for FLS2, the delta Fn is given by this formula, A over N raised to the power of one over three. So you can look at figure in the commentary for ASH to LRFD uh, clause um, C, or this is commentary for clause 6.6.1.2.5-1. A is a fatigue life constant, which is given for each detail category. Here's the table. 66125-1, the units are KSIs to the power of three. Then we need to calculate the number of cycles that are going to be going, um, or that are going to be experienced by the detail. And that's 365 days 
in the design life, that is the number of years. N is the number of stress range cycles on the, on the detail per one truck passage. So for one truck passage, there may be one cycle or there may be multiple cycles. And you multiply that by the average daily truck traffic in a single lane. Okay, so you have a, a count for the trucks in a single lane. You multiply that by the number of cycles that per truck would induce. Multiply that by 75, which is the design life in Ashto, and multiply that by 365 to get the total number of cycles over the lifetime of the bridge. So um, there is a table in Ashto 66125-2 that gives us some uh, idea about the N value. And there N is 1 for simple span girders, 1.5 for continuous girders. Uh, near interior supports and it says that's up to L over 10 on either side or it's one otherwise and there are some other values in there. Really to calculate the single lane truck traffic you would get the uh, single lane ADTT and multiplied by P. Now P is a factor this is per article 3614 and uh, we'll just talk about it quickly uh, in just a second but for FLS2 the demand on the element under consideration has to deter be determined using only one truck. And you'll see that that's very similar between Ashto and S6. Uh, the HL93 truck must be used. And for those of you who are familiar with it, uh, really the HL93 configuration is, is something like this. So you have the three axles, 8, 32, 32 kips. Uh, the front axle uh, and the middle axle spacing is 14 feet and then you have variable spacing of 14 to 30. But when we are looking at the fatigue demands, the code states that we do not need to have this variability in uh, the spacing. So we're just going to use 30 feet per the code. Okay, so let's look at a quick example where we determine this delta Fn for a detail category C for FLS1 per Ashto. So this is a continuous bridge. We're looking at the top flange for the fatigue check at a pier location. It's a two span continuous bridge with uh, 40 and 47 meter spans, 10.98 meter wide. The lanes available is two. The truck loading is HL93 fatigue. It's a rural interstate highway. Uh, when you go into the code, uh, go into this table, you'll see that when you weld a stud to a plate, the, um, the fatigue category is C. So we've already looked that up and that's what you would do in design. You would always look that up and see what the, what the category ends up being. Okay, so when we look at the Ashto, it tells us the average daily truck traffic is our average daily traffic i'm sorry is going to be 20,000 vehicles per lane per day that's what a lane can really hold at the most in a given day one lane can really not go or accommodate more than 20,000 vehicles per lane so that's out of this commentary clause then there is a table which i'm listing here uh, and that's c 3.6.1.4.2-1 and it really tells us the truck fraction related to the type of highway that we've got. Uh, and that gives us the truck fraction in the total traffic. So our average daily traffic maximum is 20,000. When we go to a rural interstate highway, the ratio between ADTT and ADT is 0.2. So that's 20%, that's a very high ratio. So overall per lane, Per single lane, uh, sorry, overall the average daily tr truck traffic on the bridge would be 4,000. Then to get the number in one lane, and that's what we're going to use for uh, fatigue design and analysis per Ashto, we have a factor. If we have a single lane, the p value is 1.0. So if your bridge only has one lane, it can only carry one lane, then the p value is 1.0. And this is per this table. If we have two lanes, this factor is 0.85. If we have three or more lanes, the factor is uh, 0.8. So because we have two lanes, our average daily truck traffic for single lane turns out to be 3,400 trucks. 
Now we will use the formula for n, which is the total number of cycles that the category or the fatigue detail will see. That's given by 365 by 75 by n by ADTTSL. And when we have a continuous girder, uh, which is near internal supports, this table 661252, 66125-2, uh, 2, tells us that the number of cycles per truck passage are going to be 1.5. So that's this n. So really, when we multiply 365 with 75, with 1.5, and then with 3400, the total number of cycles over the lifetime of this bridge turns out to be 139,612,500. Keep that in mind for a second. Okay, so what we do then is we go to this table, which is 66125-1. We calculate the A value, which is the fatigue constant. And that is given by 44 times 10 to the power of 8 in terms of KSI to the power of 3 for category C, the detail category C. The delta Fn, which is going to be our capacity, is given by A, which is this constant, divided by N, which is the number of cycles whole to the power of 1 over 3. So when we carry out that calculation, we get a capacity, the stress capacity. If we were to check um, FLS2, it would be 3.16. The threshold stress, which is what we use for FLS1, again is for category C, and we get it from table 66125-3 is 10 KSI. Okay, so now that we have these two limits, let's move forward and see which one uh, would be uh, would take on which form. So if we are looking at the infinite life, of course our gamma delta F has to be less than or equal to delta F threshold. When we look at Ashto, the load factor is uh, 1.75. I'm I, so uh, that's what we have here, and then we have 1.15, which is the dynamic load allowance and you would then multiply it by the nominal stress, and that has to be less than or equal to 10 KSI. So when you multiply these two, uh, we have two times delta F, that has to be less than or equal to 10 KSI. We can also cast this in these terms, so delta F, the nominal stress that you get by dividing the live load moment by the S, has to be less than 5 KSI. So this would be the first check that we would do. We would basically calculate the nominal stress. If that's below 5 KSI, then our check is done. We will not go and check for FLS2. However, if that's not the case, then we have to check for FLS2. In that case, uh, the equation is this. Instead of del the delta Fn being the threshold stress, it's something that um, we've calculated, and that was 3.16. In this case, the load factor is 0 0.8. The dynamic load allowance is 1.15. Please note that it's different uh, for FLS uh, in Ashto. Uh, it is uh, 1.75, I believe, the dynamic load allowance is higher, sorry, it's not 1.75, it's uh, 1.3 or thereabouts. Uh, but for fatigue, it's a lower number. So things have been calibrated differently for uh, for fatigue life. So here it's 1.15, the load factor is 0 0.8. And then when you multiply these two, we end up with 0 0.92 multiplied by delta F. And we can cast this into a slightly different form. So delta F has to be less than or equal to 3.43 KSI. So as long as um, we have our delta F less than 5 KSI, we don't really care about the cycles. We don't need to do this work. We know that uh, we're going to be lower uh, in terms of the, the CAFT. And I'll, I'll explain to you where this two comes from when we do a little bit of a comparison. So you can see that even though on this side we're using 10, we're decreasing it by a factor of two pretty much. Uh, and this you'll see is pretty similar to what S619 does. In fact, S619 works with 
decreasing this by a factor of two. Uh, so it operates on the capacity side of things, whereas Ashto really increases the demand by a factor of two uh, for infinite fatigue life. Okay, but if you don't have that, uh, then you have to make sure that you calculate the number of cycles and you calculate the stress this way. And then we can be sure that for the number of cycles, we have enough fatigue life so the bridge will be fine during its lifetime.